Welcome back to the Garmin Autopilot installation. This is going to be part two and we're going to talk about the hydraulic steering lines and how we're going to get those all hooked up to the existing system. Okay, so we're on the Silverton and this is a 1983 boat with the Hynautic steering system, three lined pressurized reservoir. I have the H50 helm pump times two, lower and upper, and I also have the K19 cylinder using the 516's Hynautic uh, nylon steering lines that were common back in the 80s. So how we're going to hook the autopilot up to the existing steering setup is we're going to come off the helm with, they call these run tees, so one male and two female. So we'll tee off the back of the helm. We'll have our NPT to 3 8 tube adapters, ferrules to connect those, so we have six of those, and then the SAE number five O-ring boss to 3 8 steering tube adapters from C-Star to Medic, and of course the overpriced, <clears throat> very overpriced stiff nylon tube for the steering. Um, I thought about having custom hydraulic lines made, but those were even more expensive. So we're going to be field running this tube, cut to length, and using those connectors to hook up the autopilot pump to the helm. So I have the dual helm without power assist, and basically all these lines just tee together, and we have to install the shadow drive, which I will later when I get more fittings to, to put that in one of the port or starboard steering lines. So essentially, the first helm tees into the second helm, as shown, and then we tee in again for the autopilot pump. And these lines will go down to the cylinder, and the third line, which they don't really clearly show, but the third line will go back to the reservoir. Now I will make a note that Garmin did release a bulletin about the Hynotic pressurized reservoir and their Garmin 1.2 liter pump and I think all of them but the smart pumps. The Hynotic system typically likes to run around 25 to 30 psi and Garmin said 10 to 12 maybe 15 psi is what you can be able to get away with on this pressurized system so we're going to start low see how it does and we'll have to bump the pressure up as required. Step one is I did run the ORB fittings down to 12 foot pounds per the instructions now I'm going to try to run the tubing up into this mess. Okay, so I have the hydraulic lines connected here. The ORB fittings torque to 12 to 14 foot-pounds. And for the, for the brass ferrules that connect to the silver stainless steel fittings there, the instructions said to tighten by hand until they bottom out and then one and a half turns with a 5 8 wrench while holding the ORB fittings and silver there. So we got that installed and I guess those ferrules crush against the stainless in the tubing there. So those are all set. I'm gonna zip tie that up and we'll work on installing this into the helm. Crucial step here is making sure your lines are marked correctly. Port, starboard, return, up on the helm. Fortunately, they have it stamped. Maybe port, return, starboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these nylon lines off, take off the NPT fittings, and get those ready to install the T's. Pro tip, learn this one the hard way. Before you take any of these lines apart, make sure to relieve all the pressure from the reservoir valve, uh, usually in the engine room, or in my case, the cockpit. Otherwise, you will have pressurized fluid getting ready to blow out of there. I'm gonna put down some oil mats and get ready to make some mess. Well, I guess it wouldn't be a boat project without royally screwing something up. So I'll overlay the picture of this fitting, but I had crushed it trying to unscrew it with a wrench because I'd had taken the line out. Um, uncrushed so these are half inch by 20 threads and I was able to use a copper line or brake line flare tool to open this back up and slowly work a half inch by 20 
thread grade eight bolt through there because I didn't have a tap. Um, got the bolt to thread all the way through, but now the 45 degree flare won't fit down in there because it's still a little bit ovaled out. So won't be finishing tonight, but I overnighted more parts. Um, you know, that was cheap. So I ordered an extra one too, but word of caution, be really careful when pulling these out of the back of the helm. You can crush them pretty easily, apparently. Um, I would recommend a socket instead of a wrench. Okay, well, I'm going to hook everything else up that I can while I wait for parts and get this cleaned up. All right, so I made some orders and phone calls and going to get another one of these adapter things. Um, I'll post a link or some pictures of what the kit looked like and its part numbers, probably. A lot of people still have the Hynonic systems on their boat. They were widely popular for the longest time. Sea Star bought them a while back in... You know, I don't, oh shoot, it's been years and now Dometic recently bought them in the last couple years at the time of this video. And according to them, they are discontinuing all support for Hynotic stuff and moving to their new 3.8s line and their specific products. So that'll be great for everyone who has old boats and wants to work on things. But with that being said, there are a few parts left available. I just snatched some up myself. So I'm gonna get back to hooking everything up that I can and we'll wrap it up for the night. So I've got the three new lines kind of just roughed in. I've got the T's in and I've got the 3 8 line adapters in. Of course, I'm missing that last one there. So I'm going to go ahead and get those hooked up and route these very stiff hydraulic lines. Well, I want to wrap up part two of this video segment called hydraulic connections you know pretty darn close except for breaking that fitting uh the next video will be part three bleeding the hydraulic system again this is a hynotic three line pressurized reservoir system and we will go through the whole bleed procedure with that and the autopilot bleed procedure from garmin thanks for watching and i'll see you on part three